What's it like to win this? It is very humbling uh, just to be among Cleveland legends uh, that I admire. I, I really, you know, when I do things, when I grew up in Puerto Rico, one of the things my parents always say, uh, do things without expecting anything back. I, I just play the game just to make a difference and and uh, coach just to make a difference to help people. I don't, I never expect anything bad, but to get in a war like this, it is just uh, not uh, one moment. It's a collage of moments and a collaborated uh, effort that comes up because it's not just me. I play in a team, so a lot of people have to do with this. What's your fondest memory from that uh, 90s, uh, 90s team? Well, you saw my son jumping in the field in 1997 All-Star Game. That was a precious moment because you're talking about family, right? Family bonding. My son uh, jumping in the field, took my trophy in the 97 All-Star Game. That's a great memory. I also have a lot of great memories, personal one, but the memory that I really uh, cherish the most is the 95 when we raised that banner, the American League Center and Champions, because the significance of that was huge. We had such a major drought in Cleveland of winning that that brought us back in the map. And I feel like from there on, we were able to, to build kind of like a legacy and a winning tradition and be able to sell 455 uh, consecutive games. Sam, did you expect that the All-Star game next year, that you know, they'll do something to honor what you did in 97? With I, the just, game? <laughs> I just say that I, I, I don't expect things in return, but that'll be kind of classy if they do it. I, I, uh, it, it will bring, it'll bring back great memories of the uh, last All-Star game here. And by the way, the last All-Star game that was played here, the, the, the Cleveland Indians of Major League Baseball did a fantastic job organizing that game. Everything went on pace, nothing was uh, disorganized, everything was super organized. Can you say anything? Can I ask you uh, a lot of changes on your roster in this offseason? What do you, how do you expect to, to score enough runs? With there was a lot of changes in 1992. In that 1990, there was a lot of changes. I came here with Carlos Baerga for Joe Carter. So I can't, you know, I, I think that what the Indians are trying to do is sell high at time and give you an opportunity to have a, a bigger window. We, we don't have the same uh, kind of money that other organizations have here. But when you are able to plan right and open that window for a longer period of time, it's better for, it's better for the organization and for the city. Uh, you got to welcome change at time. I mean, we have superstar, superstar players, but we haven't won the World Series. And the same thing went with 95 and 97. We did a phenomenal job with a great legacy. But I totally understand what you're saying. I still feel that the Indians are trying to make the team better for a longer period of time. Bien, me siento bien orgulloso. Bien orgulloso. Yo vine de Salinas, Puerto Rico, y venir de un pueblo tan pequeño a estar aquí con esta magnitud es algo que inolvidable para mí. What does it mean to have your family here? I couldn't bring them all. Some have school, the other one uh, uh, playing sports, and they didn't want, you know, we didn't want to miss them time. I mean, I know that they all should have been here. Uh, I am, I'm, I'm honored and I'm very happy that they got to, some of my kids, especially the one that grew up here, get to win this, uh, this, this event. Does Marcus still have that trophy? Yeah, he still does. Marcus has uh, a shrine of myself. I mean, he has a trophy case with my All-Star Games, uh, Rings, World Series rings, trophies, uh, MVPs, Gold Glove, and all that stuff. He has it all in his house. So I'm, I'm, I'm proud that my son kind of like uh, keep that alive. I mean, if you go to my house where I live, I don't have one thing to show that I play baseball. <laughs> not even one. I'm serious. I'm not joking. I don't have a trophy in my house that say Sandy Alomar play baseball. Not one. What happened to your the chest protector? That was one of the coolest. He ones has I've it too. <laughs> he has a shin guard, the mask, the chest protector, and the shoes. And then made a special batting glove also. He has them too. You can ask him if you want. <laughs> Why don't you have anything uh, in your own memory? Because it's just, I, I, it's just like maybe one day when I retire away from everything, I, I focus on that. But right now, it's not really, you know, I want to win a World Series, man. That's what I want to do first. And when we do that, I put everything out. <laughs> How's Robbie doing? And what was your life like living here with him, playing here with him when he was here? He was great, man. The opportunity that the Indians gave me to have a, uh, Robbie play with me, uh, at least for a couple of years, it was gratifying, man. He, I was so happy to have a chance not to play Robbie again, again, against in, uh, in the playoff. We, we had the dilemma that we, the uh, 96, they, they played against us, they eliminated us, and then 
we played in 97 and I eliminated them. So like, uh, my family was uh, happy when we were playing together and they were pushing for us to at least win a World Series together, but it didn't happen. Sandy, what is it about this place that makes it, makes it feel like home to you? People, people are very, very genuine here. Humble, genuine, they embrace you. Like I said before, I thought that uh, with that big trade uh, that Carlos Vega and, and myself came here for Joe Carter, I thought that that was going to create some you know, uh, discomfort coming here. But people embraced me with open arms, gave me an opportunity, and I just wanted to make a difference and was able to stay in Cleveland. I'm very humble about it. It's amazing how one transaction, a trade the Padres made a zillion years ago, you're here in Cleveland talking to us about this. What a different, what a different, that one move that changed my life forever, that one transaction that gave me the opportunity of a lifetime was able to open a door for us to bring younger people and us to get a new stadium. So many fans have maintained such a special connection with so many guys from those teams in the 90s. Just over 20 years, how, how special has that been? To have that unbelievable. Uh, the attachment that people have on a 90s team is unbelievable. It's almost unrealistic because it's been so so long ago that, but it goes to show you that the 455 that you see out there, that's that. It's all that and more. That's why these people, the games we gave them, coming from behind from five five runs, going to bring in that drought. It was, we were so separated from winning that when we won, the first team that did that that, that, that streak was the 90s team. That's why we they have that attachment with us. Yeah. This team can change that. Win. Sandy Grover was talking about in the video at the end of the video about you getting a getting a chance to manage. Is that still something you want to do? Is the opportunity to arise itself? Yes. I'm not losing sleep about the managerial job. Uh, I don't I don't solicit, I don't network, and I don't have an agenda as a coach. I'm here to do my, my job and I do my job to the fullest. I love to help, I love to be on, on the field. But the opportunity coming in the future, I greatly appreciate it. I'll do the interview and hopefully I get a job. But we have a good manager right now. And I'm not saying that just the managerial stuff is about here. I'm happy with what I'm doing. And that's, a, that's the end of it right now. I really can't focus on things that I can't control. How do you think Roberto Perez is going to do this year? What do you I think Roberto do? Perez is going to do great. He's uh, an exceptional defensive catcher. Uh, he proved that in 2016 when he uh, helped us in a, go to the World Series. Uh, I mean, I really have been blessed to have two catchers here with such a de defensive skills uh, with Jan Gomes and easy to work with and Roberto Perez that I don't, I don't, I don't feel like I'm not, I'm not afraid to have Roberto Perez to be the catcher. I, I feel like he's going to do great. Now you were here in 2016 to present this award to mm -hmm. Hargrove, correct? Mm -hmm. That's correct. How was that for you to be able to have him now do it to you? It's totally different. See how much I'm sweating right now? <laughs> <laughs> That was easy. That was easy. Like presenting to Grover was great because Grover meant so many, so much for my career. He uh, Grover was one of the one of the one of the people that really got me here because playing against him in the minor league, he got to see me play, and he saw me and Barriga. And when the Indians were looking for to make a trade, he's one of the guys that presented that trade.